Hello everyone, welcome back to the ESL Server tutorial. In this episode, we're going in on the more advanced options of the ESL uh, management. If you haven't seen the episode on basic ESL management, please watch that episode first because we're going in deeper than we did in that episode and we're building upon lessons that we learned in that episode. So let's get started. In the last episode, we uh, linked and unlinked and refreshed the images of the ESLs, but we didn't do anything with the settings of the ESLs. So let's get back to the ESL server. As you can see, we've got links on certain variety types, uh, but it's a bit of a mess. There's linked labels here, unlinked labels there, another linked one, unlinked. Well, we can uh, sort it by using the search bar at the top. And the first one is a dropdown that allows us to either show all ESLs, show only the linked ESLs, which means that we do not see the unlinked ESLs anymore, or the other way around, only the unlinked, that we know which labels are available in our store to link to products. We can show the active ESLs, now this is handy in the case that you have a store where some labels have gone defective or the batteries run out. That way you can see which ESLs are currently polling on your base stations. And there's also of course another one called show inactive ESLs. Right now we don't have any inactive ESLs. That's a good thing. That means that there are no ESLs that have a link in our database but are not actually polling the base station which would mean that one of our batteries has gone dead. You can show the active and linked ESLs, which is a combination of both being active and being in the link table. So these are all the labels in our store that are currently listening to product updates. And then there's the opposite of that, show the pending and the error ESLs which happens when, for instance, an image has failed or the battery has died or the connection has failed. With that uh, dropdown, it's very easy to group your ESLs by their uh, current state. Now, if you show all of your ESLs, you might want to narrow it down a bit more. Say you want to know exactly how many uh, powered ESLs you have in your store. Well, then we can search for the letters PE, which is in the name of the ESL. There we go. We have five PE range labels. But sometimes things get a little mucked up. Say for instance that we search for 006. And then it can mean two things at the same time. It can either mean the unique ID or it can be part of the MAC address. So what we can do is say we only want to see columns where value 006 is in the unique ID. Or we can say the other way around, we only want to see it where it's part of the MAC address. We can also say we only want exact matches. Well, there is no exact match for MAC address 006, so we won't find that one, of course. But there are exact matches for the unique ID 006. Match case is the same. We're looking for a number right now, so that won't work. But if we were to type in the product name, D-O-L-E, and we search in the uh, description column, we will find them. But if we type it in lowercase letters, we won't find it. So those are the basic functions. It speaks for itself. Most search bars have these options. So that's how you can easily keep track of the ESLs that you have. Now let's get into other more advanced options of the ESL server system. And one of the first things we're going to look at is the poll interval. As I said in other tutorials, Poll interval means how often the ESL polls for new information. The ESLs are designed for power efficiency, so they only connect to the base station for a fraction of a second. That way we can let them run on batteries for years and years. But sometimes 
you want them to either last a bit longer or you want a store that is always responding to the latest updates uh, based on the situation that you're in and you want to actually lower the poll time so that your labels respond to changes faster. Now, in order to do that, we can change that by selecting an ESL in the ESL server and change the minimum poll interval in seconds. So we can say, I want you to poll every 10 seconds. Now, a side note here is that if you lower the poll time, you're actually instructing the ESL to open its radio channel more often. So the battery, batteries will last a bit less. That means that you have to change your batteries more often. If that's not an issue, go right ahead. It's uh, your own decision whether you want a very responsive system or a system with very low maintenance. And usually you want to have the ideal point in between the two. So we have assigned that new value. As you can see, it turned to white in the ESL server. That means that at this moment, ESL server is not completely aware of the situation. And the next time that settings are being sent, it will show the newest data. 20 means I've changed it. I haven't had confirmation that it's changed yet. We can actually enforce this by selecting the label and select the action request settings. When you do that, you ask the ESL to read out its memory and give a setting uh, of each single uh, environmental variable that the ESL can have. So that's the poll interval, the battery level, uh, the last time it polled, the link quality, the base station it's on. It's an easy tool to make sure that your label is doing what you want it to do. Now let's look at the other options that we have. We just looked at the poll interval. Then there is a poll timeout. Poll timeout means when you take a label far away from a base station, it may lose the connection. But maybe you just take it away from the store for a couple of seconds to change the battery and then bring it back. The uh, poll timeout allows you to change the number of polls that the ESL performs before deciding to look for a different base station. In this case, 10 times. So 10 times 20 seconds. So you have 200 seconds, a bit over three minutes to get the label back in range before the label decides that base station is no longer here or I'm no longer in that base station's range. I'm going to look for a new one. The display orientation. You can flip the display if you have labels that are turned upside down. For instance, if you have them in a frame where you can place them both directions. The poll to info ratio, which is uh, by default on 39, is similar to the one with the request settings. If an ESL polls for data, it's only asking the base station if there's new information. When we uh, have request settings, we ask the ESL to send all of its environmental variables on the next time it's connecting to the base station. Now, by default, the, that number is 39. That means it does 39 polls only asking for information with the least amount of data going over the network. And then each 40th time, it will send all of its environmental variables like the last pull time, the link quality and everything. This again is to save the battery life. And at the bottom, we have the channels that the ESL will scan on. Uh, I explained this in the base stations tutorial. Channels are like in Wi-Fi. Uh, there are certain channels within the 2.4 gigahertz band that the ESLs use for communication. Now, sometimes some of these bands are saturated by other devices and there is a very bad quality uh, connection over those channels. So you can turn off channels or you can turn them on and then you press apply 
and you apply these new settings to that ESL. You can also combine uh, the channels that the ESL is scanning on and the channel that the base station is uh, connecting on. Basically, in that the sense you can actually make little groups of labels that are assigned to a specific base station. But there's actually a better option for that, and that is called the LAN ID. Now, I talked about the LAN ID in the advanced base station part of the tutorial. Here I have two base stations, A20, the one that we've been using for the tutorial so far, and a new one, 0058, which has the LAN ID of 1234. Now, if we take an ESL and we move it to the new base station, and we don't want it to leave that new base station, we can assign the base station's LAN ID to the ESL. And that means that the ESL will only connect to base stations that have that LAN ID or the LAN ID 0000, which is a catch-all channel. So I actually physically moved two labels nearer to the other base station. So let's move those labels. It's the label D9, which is now on EBS 40820, but I want to move it to that new base station. So I select the ESL, I select an action, move to base station. It will look for the base stations on your network. It's base station 0058. And let's send it over there. So the next time that the ESL is pulling for information, the ESL server will instruct the ESL to switch from this base station to another base station. And once it arrives there, it will show that information here. As you can see, the uh, text has grayed out, just like with the update of the uh, poll interval, where the ESL server said, yeah, I changed it by, I haven't had a confirmation yet. Well, that label has now sent its confirmation. It's polling every 10 seconds. And you'll see in a minute that this label will no longer be on base station 40, but on EBS 30, and it just happened. It's now on EBS 30.0.0.0.5.8. Now we can press the right mouse click on the top bar and say, I want to know what your uh, LAN ID is. So let's click the LAN ID. And right now it's set to 000, the catch all channel. Now we select that ESL and we say, I want you to set your LAN ID to this base station's value. And as we've seen, the LAN ID of that base station is 1234. So the moment that this ESL pulls for an instruction, the ESL server will tell that base station, or rather tell that ESL to only stick to that base station's LAN ID. So it grayed out again because the ESL server has given the instruction, but it's waiting for confirmation from the label that it actually happened. In the meantime, the link quality has jumped above 100. So since it's nearer to that base station, the link quality is a lot better. It is um, usually best to do this by hand you know exactly where in the store you've placed your labels and which labels are close to which base station. It is a bit of a setup to do, but it uh, pays out in the end because your labels have a much better link quality. So changes in the system are processed a lot faster. Now, if that is a bit too much work for you, there is actually a feature to do that automatically. As you can see, all of the labels have an LQI, or the Link Quality Index, and some of them are pretty bad at the moment, and you can move them all by hand, or you can do it a lot faster. It's called load balancing. And basically what it means is, if you click that button to 
do a load balancing right now, what you're basically saying is that each and every ESL that has a link quality of 10 or lower, so it's in yellow, orange, or even red, which I hope you'll never see because that means the link quality is really poor. The next time that the ESL will pull to the base station for information, the base station will instruct it to just go find any other base station. Uh, it will not try to connect to the existing base station for 15 minutes. And if it can't find any better base station to connect to, it defaults back to the one it was connected to 15 minutes earlier. So I wouldn't do this in a store that is live. I would usually do this at a certain time. You can actually tell the uh, load balancing to happen at a certain time. You can click here, say, I want this daily at midnight every 24 hours. And you can apply that setting. And now every night at midnight, all the labels with bad link quality are instructed to just go and find a better base station to connect to. And that wraps up pretty much all of the advanced topics of ESLs. We've discussed how to uh, stack units together based on their uh, status, how to search for certain fields with the search bar, how to move them from base station to base station, how to actually bind them to that base station using the LAN ID, and how to automatically balance bad labels away from your current base stations and find a better one so that all of your labels have a good connection. Thank you for watching this episode. If you have any questions remaining, feel free to contact Opticon. The support link is in the description. Stick around for other episodes in this tutorial. Thank you for watching.